Hi everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. My name is Tyler Edick, and today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Today we're going to be talking about how to start your own podcast. So the first thing to think about is, what do you want to talk about? Uh, and I would say a good place to start is, what do you know about? And what do you want to know more about? Um, everyone has something valuable to bring to the table, something to tell other people and discover alongside other people. For the creative truth, I consider myself a bit of an artist, a creative person, but I also know a lot of talented creative people. So my goal was to just discover how other people uh, make money and negotiate contracts and got into art in the first place. So just, this is going to be somewhat of a practical episode. You can email me with questions or, you know, reach out to me directly if you would like. Um, if you haven't noticed already, we are filming this on Zoom currently. So a great way to produce a show is to just record a Zoom call. Zoom, you can set this up in your Zoom account. It's even, you can get a free Zoom account if you want to have more than two people and record for more than 40 minutes. You might have to pay for your Zoom account, but it's a great way to produce your podcast uh, virtually. And at the end of the call, when you hit stop, Zoom will actually give you an MP3 or an, and an MP4 if that's what you pick. Um, and an MP4 is a video file, MP3 is the audio. You can then take your MP3 and upload it right to your podcast host. Um, so that's the very bare minimum you need is a computer with an internet connection. That's somebody interesting to talk to. If you want to spruce things up a bit, get a microphone. I'm not using this one today. Um, it also has like an arm and a USB cable and it's, you know, you need a couple things. If you want something right out of the box, get a Blue Yeti. Um, they'll sit right on your desk and it will drastically improve the quality of your sound. It's another thing uh, that I do with my guests is I just say, hey, do you have some sort of microphone that plugs in that's going to improve the quality of the sound? So uh, if you don't have, uh, if you're not at a desk, another way to do it is with your phone. You can talk directly into your phone. Again, if you have some sort of headphones, whether they are... Uh, Earbuds with a microphone, AirPods, a microphone that actually plugs in that has a microphone on the cord. You can talk into that and or you can do what I'm doing, which is actually wearing my uh, mic on my collar and uh, oh, and to show you the show you the recorder. So lots of options. Uh, you can record directly to Zoom, to your device, to a remote recorder, to your phone, to a portable recorder, uh, it's, you know, with a, the, all sorts of different options. Do not let the tech scare you uh, away from actually starting a podcast yourself. Um, the other things to think about are you should not take off more than you can chew. Me doing 52 podcasts in 2021, that being one a week, and the episodes lasting 20 to 40 minutes, or sometimes an hour, there's like way more than I can handle. Um, but a good rule of thumb is if you're going to do a daily podcast, you should start uh, around like five minutes per episode. If you're going to do weekly, around 20 minutes is good. And if you're going to do anything longer than that, 40 minutes to an hour, you should consider just doing a monthly podcast. I also recommend batching your production. So basically draft an email and send it to 10 people and hope to get six and just say, hey, I'm starting a new podcast on this subject. I think you'd be a great guest. Would you mind doing a 20 minute Zoom call with me? Here are some dates that could work for me if you're interested. You send that to 10 people, six of them agree. You set up your times, you conduct your interviews, which is very informal. The beauty of your podcast, unlike traditional media, is that it's very informal. You might wanna have to do a little research and uh, prep some questions. Um, but once you get into the flow of things, uh, you'll get used to it and you'll have no trouble filling the time, at least for me, that's not been a problem. Uh, then as you start to, you know, you've recorded six episodes, you, 
you publish them in your podcast host. I use a tool called Podbean. There's Stitcher. There's a whole bunch of different podcast hosts out there. They push to all your different platforms, so you're not having to go to 14 different websites. Um, and it's very low cost, low barrier to entry. You really, again, you need your phone or your computer, a Zoom call, uh, a Zoom account, uh, an internet connection. Microphone's 100 bucks, 100, and, 100 to 200 dollars. Um, you can start your podcast right there. Very simple. If you want to add video, again, Zoom, or you can do it on your phone, or you get into the camera. So, yeah, so now you want to add a camera. Now you're filming on an actual professional camera. You can have, again, your external audio. You can have something that plugs directly into your camera. You can have something that has multiple inputs that plug into a remote recorder. Like the uh, like a Tascam or a Zoom recorder, um, you could do it man on the street style, where you've got a microphone, something like this. Uh, again, don't let the tech stop you. What we do is we produce something with the bare minimum, and then each time we go into a session where we're producing, we go, how can we make this better? How can we make this better? How can we make this better? We add tech and we scale up and we slowly add to our production capabilities in a gradual way as we feel comfortable. So uh, otherwise it'll become too much and then you'll stop. Most podcasts stop around seven episodes. Um, I like to at least have like six weeks recorded out, six episodes recorded out. I'm producing this episode on Monday night, October 11th because my episode comes out on Tuesday morning, October 12th. Um, I've had this idea for a while, but all of this is very off the cuff. So again, very different episode than we're used to. Um, let's see. Then once we uh, have added a camera, we should consider how we're gonna get audio. So we have different microphone inputs, right? So, here, in order to have multiple uh, mic inputs, we have what's called an interface. And I'm not an audio guy, but all it does is it basically takes more different audio inputs and it puts them into the computer. So we're not, we're using, we're not using it today, obviously, because we're just going off of the one on my chest. But it's just a USB input. We also have a, uh, the video input, so you can see what the camera's seeing. Uh, this is with something called a capture card. And I'm using a free software called OBS to actually do the recording itself and to, have, to handle all the different audio and video inputs. I'm also sharing what's on my laptop to my TV. So, lots of different ways to do it. Again, we start small, we scale up, we start with just a phone recording or a Zoom recording, and we work our way up to a full studio. All right, so if we bring it around to this side, this is what I see from the podcast studio. So if you're listening to this episode, this is probably a good episode to pop over to uh, YouTube to see what we're seeing here. So this is now a way for me to do Zoom calls from my chair right here, where I can just sit right here, throw Zoom up on my TV, and talk to my person directly. And so uh, they can see me through the camera, and uh, I can see them on the TV. Or you can do it with your computer. Uh, you can also have... You know, in this particular studio, I have my laptop that can run the podcast studio, and I have my desktop over there. Either can run Zoom calls. Um, I also have an audio interface on my main computer, but uh, I just like having the laptop and the TV over here because then it's like, this is my podcast studio, my podcast setup. You also notice that I have little things like the uh, these cheap one by one foam sound cards hung up behind me and around the room. Um, this particular room is 
not very echoey, but uh, there is a lot of different building noise going on. So if there's a band playing or somebody working in the wood shop or somebody playing music in another room, it's not a soundproof room. It's just a decent quality room acoustically with a lot of stuff in here. The carpet helps, the blanket helps, even just this wood diffuses the noise in different ways so the sound waves are not bouncing across. You could probably even hear a motorcycle just go by in the background. Um, again, gradual improvements. If you're just starting out, it can be a blanket over your head. Make a little fort like you were, like you did when you were a kid. And then eventually you can work your way up to having a full-fledged soundproof studio. But again, do not let the gear frighten you. Do not let it stop you. Do not let it scare you. Uh, another thing to consider is that maybe you just want to produce something that's a limited run. Um, maybe you have something you want to, a subject matter you want to explore, but you have kind of a goal in mind. So I would like to talk to 10 of the top professionals in my field, or you, let's say it's like a, let's say you want to do a, a, a podcast about a specific baseball team from a specific year. Maybe your goal is to talk to these 20 people and then it, it you know and then you're done and then you find something else. So that'd be like a limited run. You can do that. And you know what? As a creative as a host of the creative truth, um the show has changed and grown a lot. And uh the reason it can do that is because I'm the boss. I can <laughs> Raz and I said uh when we uh when he moved to Charlotte that, you know what, rather than let this thing just sit dormant, we're just going to keep going with it. So uh, we've, we adopt, we originally wanted to do the interview format and uh, we love that format, but it's uh, not restricted to that format. We can really do, we can go a lot of different directions with it. Uh, we, early on, we did a lot of educational stuff like this and um, you know, people like it and uh, I still get feedback that people want, more of that kind of thing. So with your podcast, you can also change it with time. So don't feel like you need to, you know, you're going to be locked into one particular structure for the rest of your life. Um, you can change, you can also, you could do a limited run, but you can also just change. You can pivot and, uh, you know, your diehards might come with you. They might not, but, uh, um, you know, it's real ultimately up to you to, where you want to start with it and where you want to go. So just to take a step back, basically not that this is the end all be all of podcasts, but uh, you start with a phone or a zoom account. You add a microphone to improve your sound quality. You add video and you upload to YouTube, you start bringing out guests. You add multiple microphones, multiple inputs. You figure out things slowly, gradually. You work your way up. You have a schedule. You stick to your schedule. And you have me as a resource. So if you have questions, you can email me at hello at creative-truth.com. You can leave me a comment on YouTube. I want to hear your ideas. I want to hear your podcast ideas. I would like to be a guest on your podcast. Um, do not let the tech stop you. Have a realistic expectation for how often and how long you want your episodes to come out. Stuff doesn't need to be edited at first. If you, if you, you know, this is a very raw episode, um, as you'll see, but, uh, you can work your way up to having a more highly polished and produced episode. Uh, like the one I produced for Visit Savannah, which is called Savannah, Georgia, Anything But Ordinary. That has sound effects and edits, and I, re I reorder things. Um, so it takes longer to produce, but, it, but your podcast does not have to be overcomplicated. You can just grab a mic and talk. And, or, or, you know, if you're not the expert and you know the people to talk to, just talk to them for 20 minutes once a month or every other week. Start small, work your way up. That's my advice. That's this week's episode of The Creative Truth. The reason it's so rushed, the reason this is all one take off the cuff is because I'm trying to adhere to my schedule. So if you're listening, I appreciate it. We're about to hit 2,000 downloads, which is basically means we've doubled our listenership in the last couple months, and I couldn't do it without you. 
So thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next week's episode. Yes.